Are you ready to hear about the most disturbing case finally solved after 16 years? Lori Slazinski's disappearance had remained a mystery until recently when it was solved in a bizarre twist. Her family moved to Auburn, Alabama when she was just 13 years old, and she quickly adapted to the rural Alabama farm country lifestyle, but her happy life was cut short on June 10, 2006, when she disappeared without a trace. Who was responsible for her tragic and senseless murder? The answer is chilling and will leave you questioning the safety of your own community. Auburn, the largest city in eastern Alabama, is a melting pot of culture with Southern hospitality being one of its defining characteristics. Lori's family moved there from New York when she was just 13 years old, and she quickly adapted to the rural Alabama farm country lifestyle. Lori was an avid animal lover, beautiful, studious, and outgoing. She majored in psychology with a minor in criminology at Auburn University, and later took up a job at the East Alabama Mental Health Center. Her close bond with her family remained intact, and her mother called her every day to check up on her. When Lindsay and another co-worker went to Lori's house to check on her after she failed to show up at work, they found the door unlocked and the AC on. Lori's dog, Peanut, was inside his crate, looking well-nourished and happy, but Lori was nowhere to be found. After an investigation, it was discovered that a man named Thomas May had killed Lori on June 10, 2006, the same night she disappeared. Thomas May, a transient from Kentucky, had been on the run for years, living under an alias and committing crimes across the country. He eventually confessed to Lori's murder while in prison for another crime, claiming that he had killed her in her own trailer home after she refused his advances. May was sentenced to life in prison without parole for Lori's murder. Lori's family finally received closure after 16 years of uncertainty and grief, and justice was served for Lori's tragic and senseless murder. The case highlights the importance of staying vigilant and being aware of the dangers that can lurk in our communities. It's a reminder to appreciate and cherish the time we have with our loved ones and to never take their safety for granted. Lindsay noticed that something was not right when she arrived at Lori's home and saw that her beloved pet was left alone and unattended. She realized that the three rugs Lori had placed in her kitchen were missing, along with the outside trash can. On the same day, Lori's mother, Arlene, received a call from her workplace informing her that Lori had missed two consecutive days of work. Arlene tried to contact her daughter but was unsuccessful, so she immediately immediately left for Auburn after informing her husband Casey of their daughter's disappearance. Upon arriving at Lori's trailer, Arlene found the door slightly open and Lori missing. Her car was also gone. However, Arlene noticed that Lori's kitchen rugs, a pillow from her couch, a Galileo thermometer, a green trash can, and the phone cord from her landline were all missing. She reported her daughter missing while hoping that she would show up eventually. During the initial investigation, the police scanned Lori's trailer but could not find any significant evidence that could link a possible suspect. However, they found obvious signs of a struggle and scuff marks on the wall. Semen was discovered on Lori's bedsheet, and traces of blood were also found on the doorknob. A coat hanger and a single golden hoop earring were also found at the scene. On June 10, 2006, surveillance footage showed Lori stopping at an Alabama Walmart, and that was the last known sighting of her. Later that day, Arlene received a phone call from one of Lori's friends, Rick, who claimed that he met Lori the day she went missing and thought she might have gone off to make a drug deal. Lori had met Rick at a bowling alley where he worked, and they had grown marijuana together. However, Arlene did not believe that her daughter would ever be involved in drug dealing. On June 14, 2006, Lori's car was found fully ablaze near the bowling alley where Rick previously worked. The investigation shifted from a missing persons case to a possible homicide. Lori was not inside the car at the time it was burned, and a hand-rolled cigarette and a gas can were found nearby in the woods. Enos repeated the same story he told Arlene during questioning adding that he and Lori grew marijuana together and that Lori might have gone off to sell her share of the weed. However, the police could not find any evidence of Lori dealing drugs. During the interview, investigators also noticed scratches on Rick's hands and arms, which he claimed came from his dog. The incident horrified Lori's family, and they were almost certain that something terrible had happened to her. The investigation was ongoing. When investigators spoke with Lindsay, more troubling information surfaced about the disappearance of Lori. Lindsay revealed that she had heard Rick Enos speaking in the background during her last phone conversation with Lori, but didn't think much of it at the time since Enos was known to be a friend of Lori's. Lindsay also claimed that Lori had confided in her about Enos's unrequited love for her and that she planned to talk to him about it before her disappearance. 
Enos initially denied any involvement in Lori's disappearance, but investigators found inconsistencies in his statement and began to suspect him as the prime suspect. They searched his car and found items of interest, including a knife, cleaning supplies, and handcuffs. Further digging into Enos's past revealed a dark history. He had murdered his mother and stepfather when he was only 12 years old. Enos was unable to be tried as an adult at the time of his parents' murder and was instead sent to jail for nine years. After his release, he moved to Auburn where he met Lori. Despite Enos his past and circumstantial evidence, he could not be charged with Lori's murder without direct evidence or Lori's body. He left Auburn just weeks after his interview with detectives and moved to Huntsville, where he moved in with a roommate named Abram Sissons. Sissons later found Enos's behavior suspicious, including the fact that he brought kitchen rugs with him that he claimed were a gift from Lori. He also mentioned being in love with a woman who disappeared without a trace, but did not mention her by name. Sissons later learned of Enos's past and asked him to leave immediately. When he returned to his apartment, he found it completely trashed. In 2016, a cold case unit reopened Lori's case, and investigators began re-examining the evidence and conducting interviews. Although they were able to link Enos to the rugs and a Galileo thermometer that was missing from Lori's home, they still lacked direct evidence to charge him with her murder. The case remained unsolved, leaving Lori's family without answers. Enos emerged as the primary suspect in Lori's disappearance after a re-examination of the evidence. Despite Agent Mark's suspicions, he lacked the evidence to prove Enos's guilt without a body or more evidence. However, Agent J.W. Barnes stumbled upon an envelope containing a report that had not been opened in 10 years, which contained critical evidence in the case. DNA evidence linking Enos to Lori's bedsheet and the front door of the trailer where she was last seen was eventually collected and used to build a strong case against him. Enos, who had since moved to Pilot, Virginia, and was engaged to a school librarian named Elena Atkinson, was eventually arrested on his 38th birthday, 12 years after Lori's disappearance. Enos's trial was postponed due to COVID-19 and eventually took place in April 2022. The prosecution presented compelling evidence linking Enos to the crime, including DNA evidence found on a cigarette butt in Lori's bedsheet. The defense argued that police may have planted the evidence, but two witnesses came forward to provide crucial information about Enos's behavior prior to Lori's disappearance. One former co-worker testified that Enos had asked him for gas and if he could keep the gas tank just one day before Lori went missing. Police later found Lori's burnt car in a gas can that matched the description of the one missing from the bowling alley where Enos worked. Another former co-worker testified that Enos had joked about getting rid of a body when asked why he had moved from Auburn. Enos's defense was weak, and his claim that he had consensual sex with Lori before her disappearance was not convincing. He was eventually found guilty of two counts of capital murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Although Enos's arrest and conviction brought relief to Lori's family, his fiance and co-workers were shocked by the turn of events. The case serves as a reminder that justice can be delayed but not denied and that the truth will eventually come to light. As we come to the end, we hope that Lori's story has reminded you to stay vigilant and aware of the dangers that can lurk in our communities. We also hope that her family's closure and justice served for Lori's tragic and senseless murder brings some solace to those affected by this heinous crime. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel.